Many have said that Slovenia is one of Europe's most unexpectedly charming destinations, and with a number of churches with mountain range backdrops, they might be onto something. The question, however, is if the capital city, Ljubljana, is worth visiting. After all, traveling can be expensive, time consuming, and require a lot of energy. So with this video, I aim to help you decide whether visiting Slovenia should be a high or low priority when planning your next European adventure. Hello everyone, my name is Roger and in today's video we will be taking a closer look at Slovenia. For some context, I spent one year backpacking through Europe where I stayed a minimum of 30 days in various countries. During my month-long stay in Slovenia, I received multiple questions about my time there and today I will answer the top five questions about Slovenia and its capital city. Question number one. Where is Ljubljana, Slovenia located? Slovenia resides in Central Europe and is surrounded by the following countries, Italy, Croatia, Hungary, and Austria. And to clarify, Slovenia is not the same as Slovakia. Slovakia is another country located on the other side of Hungary and Austria. In 2004, Slovenia became part of the European Union and NATO. In 2007, it became a Schengen country. And in that same year, they adopted the euro as their primary currency. So if you plan on visiting, the euro is the currency in Slovenia. And the capital city is Ljubljana, located in the center of Slovenia. And where the symbol and protector of the city is a very cool looking dragon, which represents embodying power, courage, and wisdom. What is Ljubljana known for? Slovenia as a whole is known for its landscapes, lakes, and dramatic scenery, but also for their wine, which goes hand in hand with food. And one thing the capital city has plenty of is restaurants, which is something a budget traveler like myself isn't that much into. And so my overall opinion about the capital city is there isn't much to do if wine and restaurants aren't your thing. I did notice an awful lot of older couples and families enjoying what Ljubljana had to offer. So based on your age and financial demographic, the city may or may not be a good choice. I had a conversation with a Slovenian visiting her family for the weekend. She was living in London and she said something along the lines of, there isn't much here if you are young, so, I moved to London, and after a few days in the city, I did get that vibe. To me, the best attraction was the hilltop castle and its grounds. It felt like that is where I was spending the most of my time, and I enjoyed that area very much. I walked, ran, or exercised around the castle almost daily. It's very open to the public, and I had the good fortune of renting an apartment that was a 10 minute walk from it. The castle is the coolest, most exciting thing in the capital city. And overall, the city is clean and safe, and the Slovenian people are some of the friendliest and most welcoming individuals I've met in my travels. Is Ljubljana expensive? Based on the Statistical Office of the European Union, known as Eurostat, the following resource can help us get a better understanding of where Slovenia lands on the spectrum of cost. In 2021, price levels for consumer goods and service differed widely across Europe. The highest price level among EU member states was observed in Denmark, 40% above the EU average, and the lowest in Romania and Bulgaria, 44% below the average. I will leave a link to this article below if you want to dive deeper into those numbers, but ultimately this article represents the most recent analysis of price levels in the European Union. And if you notice in the graph, Slovenia lands towards the end of the center area. A little bit more costlier when compared to the other cities I have profiled, such as Riga, Latvia and Budapest, Hungary. So Slovenia is a costlier experience especially in the capital city. The thing about Riga and Budapest is that those cities seem to have more price options. If you want cheap beer in a good environment, you can find it. 
if you want expensive, higher quality craft beer in a good atmosphere, you can find that quite easily as well, along with everything in between. In Ljubljana, however, it almost feels as if you only have a mid to high tier price point to choose from. And the establishment's atmosphere is a pretty hit and miss situation as well because much of the city caters to foodies and wine enthusiasts. So I feel your money will go fast if you are not careful. So if you're on a budget, grocery stores will definitely become your best friend in this city. What other cities are worth visiting in and around Slovenia? Because I got the sense that the capital city wasn't for me and my travel style, I was more motivated to explore other areas and even outside the country. So let's start with the cities I visited in Slovenia. The first city I visited was Blade. This area blew me away with its beauty and potentially saved my trip to Slovenia because up to this point, I wasn't enjoying my time there very much. But Blade, now, that's a win. It's a mountain resort area that looks straight out of a fairy tale and even has a castle at the top of the hill overlooking the lake. It's glorious. It's a great area to go hiking, biking, swimming, or just lounge, drink some beers, and enjoy life. There is a 3.5 mile path surrounding the lake and in the center is an island with a church. You can pay 15 euros to get to it by a Pletna boat. I was in Blade for a day only because I didn't know how awesome it was, so I spent most of my time hiking to the castle and walking around the lake. I made a specific video in this city that showcases the area in more detail. If you want to see that, I left a link to that video and other videos I will mention down in the description. The second city I visited was Selje. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing a lot of these names, but Selje was about an hour and a half train ride away from the capital city. I decided to spend a night here for one reason and one reason only, the Selje Castle. Now, the city itself was kind of a ghost town. I didn't feel any energy there and it feels like it doesn't attract too many solo travelers. But once you make it to the castle and are a fan of castles like I am, it's definitely worth a visit. There are two ways to get there, by vehicle or foot, where you hike a pretty steep trail. I opted for the trail and I loved the hike. Unfortunately, I didn't have the proper clothing gear, so it did get a bit hot. But it's cool, it's cool. We out here in Slovenia, out in nature, out in these hiking trails, it's just beautiful. It's fucking hot, but it's beautiful. Fuck is hot. So yeah, black shirt and jeans probably aren't the best gear to go hiking, but once I got there, I enjoyed every second of it and I highly recommend a visit if you are in Slovenia. I made a specific video in Selje that showcases the castle a bit more. So again, that link is down below. The final city I visited was Maribor, the second biggest city in Slovenia. The Drava River cuts through the city and makes for a lovely walk or run alongside it while witnessing some beautiful sunset. Outside of Slovenia. As I mentioned, Slovenia is close to other popular countries and cities, and no other city is more famous than Venice, Italy. I booked a shuttle from Ljubljana and arrived in Venice four hours later by car. And my goodness, Venice is such an exciting city. The thing about Venice, however, is that as much as I enjoyed it and as much as I recommend people to visit it, I don't think it's a destination that you should spend more than three days. Hence, a weekend getaway from Slovenia was the perfect setup. 
And I say that because there are just too many tourists and after a while, you start focusing more on Venice's claustrophobic nature. So many people crammed into these super narrow streets that I would never want to take my full travel gear setup and deal with the number of people that bombard the city for let's say seven days or more. It would be pretty crazy. So coming from Slovenia with a small bag and a few items of clothing and necessities is an excellent approach to visiting Venice, especially for the first time. And after you have sampled it, you can decide whether you want to return for a more extended stay and how best to approach that adventure. For me, I'm satisfied with my weekend visit. I stayed at a hostel during my visit and I have dedicated a video where I showcase Venice in greater detail and its streets while discussing how to mentally approach staying at a hostel, not just in Venice, but in general. Link to that video down below. Is Ljubljana worth visiting? I would say no pretty much across the board, but regarding Slovenia as a whole, things get a little bit more complicated to answer. However, this moment gives me a proper opportunity to discuss the three types of travel methods and how that plays into my recommendation. So the three styles of travel is solo travel, where you travel by yourself, sidekick travel with a friend, and sig travel with a significant other. If you are traveling solo, I don't think Slovenia is a good choice unless you are happy with being by yourself. Now, here's the thing. Just because you travel solo doesn't necessarily mean you will be alone. There are cities in Europe that have a solid solo travel infrastructure, but in Slovenia, it does feel like it's one of those places where it would be much harder to meet and make friends. Not impossible, but not as easy as in other cities. Regarding sidekick travel, my opinion starts to change a bit but it depends on the goals you and your friend want from a trip to Slovenia. For example, suppose you are both big craft beer fans and wish to bar hop from brewery to brewery and enjoy the nightlife. I don't think Slovenia is a good option in that case. If, however, you are both into outdoor activities such as hiking, mountain biking, trail running, kayaking, and all of those activities while enjoying some fine wine and food, then yes. And finally, SIG travel, aka traveling with your significant other. I know a couple who love to go hiking and do things outdoors. It defines their relationship pretty much. And so for those type of couples, Slovenia would be excellent. I still don't recommend Ljubljana, but the Blade area and other areas near Triglav National Park and seeing how the relationship might have a dual income setup you can splurge a bit more for those nuanced experiences. Where to stay? If Slovenia is the focus, I recommend staying in the Blade area. Regarding how many days, I recommend at least three days where one of those days can be used to visit Ljubljana to explore the castle and treat yourself to some pretty tasty tacos at El Patron Tacos. It just so happens that Ljubljana has one of the best spots for tacos out of all of the places that I have traveled to in Europe. If time and budget allows, I then recommend a one week stay. That way you have time to venture to other areas in Slovenia or the cities in other countries found in Italy, Austria, Croatia, and Hungary. One final note, if staying in the Blade area, booking your hotel and Airbnb far in advance is recommended because I've been told that rooms get booked up pretty quickly. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the top five questions I kept getting asked during my time in Slovenia. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And thank you for watching. See you in the following video. And before we get further into this video, I just want to preface that there is a very high probability that I am going to mispronounce many, many of the cities that I'm about to talk to. So to all my Slovenian people, I apologize, but you guys got some difficult names to pronounce. So I did my best.